The Forest Finn Treasure of the Rocky Mountains Famed millionaire art dealer and author Forrest Finn was confronted with his own mortality back in 1988 after getting diagnosed with a terminal form of cancer. After pondering for a few years about his life and the legacy he had left behind in the world, in an almost Willy Wonka-like fashion, Forrest Finn took a substantial amount from his art collection and prized artifacts valued at $10 million. And he hid it somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. Treasure hunters have scoured the Rockies in search of the chest filled with gold and other valuable items. Many have been drawn by Finn's cryptic poem in his memoir, which he said contains nine clues to the chest's location. However, as of my knowledge cut off in September 2021, the treasure had not yet been found. Today, he hid it inside a wooden box in a random part of the Rocky Mountains. He later detailed in a poem several clues to help treasure seekers locate the hidden riches. Furthermore, in an interview back in May of 2017, he confirmed that although people had figured out the clues and potential locations of the treasure, none had discovered the clues in the correct order and had failed to locate the treasure. Specifically, he later clarified that several treasure seekers had been roughly within 200 feet of the treasure, and many more were within 500 feet of the box. Most treasure hunters today are still in search of the famed treasure of Forest Finn, and none have provided any substantial evidence of obtaining the treasure. This further inspires treasure hunters to continue their search in the hopes of the famed riches and luxurious life that accompany it. It's important, however, not to get your hopes up too high. Although it is confirmed that the treasure exists, Forrest Finn himself claimed that it would probably take 10,000 years before a single soul will ever find the treasure. This does not deter true treasure hunters, though, as they write that the thrill of treasure hunting, hiking through the Rocky Mountains, and working to be credited as the one who figures out the clues and finds the treasure is more than a reward on its own. And the money involved is merely an added pleasure. On April 5, 1720, Dutch navigator Jacob Roggeveen visited Easter Island, and he remained the first outside human contact with the natives of the region. Roggeveen and his crew wrote vast documents and created many detailed drawings of the island and large stones that appeared to be buried deep in the ground due to natural erosion and winds. What puzzled the crew was that these large stones appeared to have been large statues carved from massive rocks and moved across great distances, seemingly impossible to accomplish. The locals had stories explaining that the statues were floated to their positions by their powerful kings and priests who had the ability to transport these large stones. Later, in a BBC documentary, many researchers would revisit the island in an attempt to explain the large stone statues but failed to come up with any reliable hypothesis regarding their movement, creation, and placement. Many have subscribed to the theory that large rolling logs would have the ability to transport the stones. However, the size of the larger heads is physically impossible to move with rolling logs. As there are no trees with trunks thick enough to support the massive weight of the Easter Island heads. But further investigation showed no residue or evidence of soot on the ceilings, as would be common with such findings. How does ASMR work? The Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, commonly referred to as ASMR in the mainstream, is more than just a trend sweeping across the internet. It is one of the biggest mysteries in medical science to this day. Roughly 95% of the population can experience it, the rest simply cannot, and the reasons for how and why it can be experienced are even further shrouded in mystery. For those not already aware of what ASMR is and wish to try the experience for yourself, it is common to find videos all across YouTube that will play sounds that can cause this sensation. Medically, ASMR is described as an experience characterized by a static-like or tingling sensation on the skin that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and the upper spine. It is currently not known what can cause our brain to begin feeling this tingling sensation caused by listening to auditory stimuli of a certain nature, nor the fact that certain soft sounds and whispers can cause this feeling. Some argue that it could possibly be an evolutionary adaptation that is present in most people, allowing parents to softly calm their children and lull them to sleep, and that this sensation works to relax stresses and other sensations to cause an easier sleep pattern. There is not much information to support this theory, however, and so any further advancements made relative to understanding the direct cause of ASMR have not yet been discovered. Why are there different blood types? Not much has been known about blood types since their discovery and is often the center of mystery around topics of illnesses and immunity. 
The variation of blood types, known as the ABO grouping, has been difficult to understand since their discovery no more than 100 years ago. These variations in blood types refer to the appearance of different antigens in the blood of an individual that can cause blood donors and recipients to have a bad reaction and rejection if the antigens do not accurately match. But the nature of these antigens and the cause of the blood types themselves seem to have no real purpose. It was believed that blood type antigens can work to prevent infections, but studies surrounding infections of all types have proven to be inconclusive. In most studies, it has been found that certain bacteria can mimic blood antigens, making them harder to detect by white blood cells and the body's natural immune system. This means that certain blood types can be more susceptible to different diseases, such as people with blood type of being more vulnerable to smallpox, and people with blood type B being more affected by E. coli infections. People with blood type O, the most common blood type, are perfectly fine without the antigens entirely. So, it begs the question, if blood types appear to worsen the condition of fighting infections and cause other evolutionary disadvantages, then why do they still exist? Why did they ever exist in the first place? Scientists struggle to understand these questions and provide answers, but it is safe to assume that understanding blood types can lead to newer discoveries that may shed light on the vital role these antigens can play in the development of health and medicine. Why do we need sleep? It might seem obvious to people who hear this question and believe that the need for sleep is already a predefined and well-understood phenomenon of the medical world. This is hardly the case. In fact, even the evolutionary advantages of sleep are not entirely known to research scientists studying this strange need. A misconception that people often seem to have is that sleep allows our body ample resetting time and our mind to relax and shut down to allow us to perform better during the day. The truth is, however, that sleep is not a resting period, and our mind actually begins going through a higher performance known as an active period in which many different functions begin happening for no understood reason. These various functions can range from information processing, restoration, and even memory strengthening. One of the added benefits of sleep, weirdly enough, is that it helps our minds reinforce information retrieved during the day and plays a vital role in memory retention. What is all the more odd, however, is that no one really knows how or why this occurs. Even though sleep is the single most activity humans will engage in throughout their lives, the secrets surrounding sleep continue to elude us. A question that further leaves scientists scratching their heads in confusion is the argument of evolutionary advantage. What could possibly be the advantage of forcing a member of the animal kingdom to spend one-third of its natural life unconscious and vulnerable? unable to eat or stay on alert for predators, or even perform natural bodily functions. This strangeness is only compounded further when analyzing that every single member of the animal kingdom requires sleep, and to deny sleep for a prolonged period of time could result in seizures and ultimately death. But why is that? No one really knows why sleep is so required and why, without it, you can die. Perhaps there is some supernatural secret to the idea of the abstract world that sleep provides us, and the answer might be far more extraordinary than scientists can understand at this moment in time. Lake Winnipesaukee Mystery Stone Obscure and unknown by many is the Lake Winnipesaukee Mystery Stone, a relic that has often been referred to as the Thunderstone. Thunderstones have often been referenced by many different cultures from around the world. Originally seen as large stone eggs that fall from the skies as a gift from a thunder god associated with the culture. Interestingly enough, this thunderstone was discovered back in 1872 and was believed to have been found in Meredith, New Hampshire, as workers were preparing the land for construction. The stone was regarded as being four inches long, two and a half inches thick, and was described as being a dark egg-shaped stone with a variety of carved symbols and two large holes burrowed deep into the stone. Many ancient astronaut experts described the stone as being similar to the head of an astronaut, as one side of the egg-shaped stone shows a man's face inside the egg, as if he were wearing a large helmet. The stone appears to have also been made with incredible precision, and the authenticity of the find was put into question. In 1994, researchers performed a borescope analysis of the stone's holes and found that the appearance of the holes indicated having been constructed with power tools. The holes were described as being extremely regular throughout with no unevenness or variation. This could not be the case, however, as the stone was discovered back in 1872, 
more than a decade before the invention of the electric drill. This could very well be irrefutable evidence of advanced technologies discovered on an artifact hundreds of years old. Yet, despite this evidence, the object itself is widely regarded by academics as nothing more than a hoax, and further research into the stone has been completely non-existent. The Rendlesham Forest Incident In December of 1980, near Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk, England, a series of reports were made by credible witnesses that detailed the event of an unidentified flying object landing in the forest and causing several unexplainable phenomena in the area. These witness reports would include sworn affidavits from multiple military officers in high positions and untold chaos for the coming years. At around 3 a.m. on December 26, a security patrol at the Royal Air Force Base Woodbridge saw what they described as bright lights descending near Rendlesham Forest. The security patrol described the lights as that of a descending aircraft and quickly rushed to investigate. Upon their arrival within sight of the aircraft, the group of two men took notice of the fact that the native animals in the forest appeared to be screeching and going into a panicked frenzy. The men described what they saw as a glowing object, metallic in appearance, surrounded with attached and brightly colored lights. One of the members of the security patrol, Sergeant Jim Penniston, later wrote in his memo that the team had encountered a craft of unknown origin, which only helped confirm the sighting of an unidentified flying craft. Additional evidence was gathered the next day by a high military official known as Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, who found spiked radiation readings at the supposed site of the landed craft within Rendlesham Forest, as well as a triangle of depression that sank within the ground as if a large object with a massive pressing force had recently been resting on that region. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt would later be punished and reprimanded for creating witness reports, sworn affidavits, and going on record to say that he had believed the event to be extraterrestrial in nature, and that the incident had been covered up by both the governments of the United Kingdom and the United States. Hexagon on Saturn, in 1981, as both of the space probes involved in the Voyager mission passed by Saturn and began snapping many different angles of its surface. They discovered an anomalous property of the gas giant that is still unanswerable even to this day. Located at the north and south poles of the planet were large open vortexes. This was made increasingly more mysterious as the probe soon discovered that the north pole vortex created a massive hexagonal pattern on the planet. This was compounded in its strangeness as future NASA missions would later confirm this anomalous property never before theorized on many of the other planets in the solar system. Juno Analyzing a strange hexagonal pattern on the north pole of Jupiter and Voyager 2 noticing vortexes on the poles of Neptune. Not only was the scientific community baffled by these findings and is still attempting to hypothesize the cause of the anomalous properties, but these discoveries led to a massive outcry from conspiracy theorists who had predicted this planetary behavior eons before the observation. The hollow Earth community pointed to these open vortexes at the north and south poles of the planets as proof of the physics behind the conspiracy theory of the hollow Earth hypothesis. In 1947, a man by the name of Admiral Byrd wrote a diary about his events of setting world records around the world. One of these entries included his journey to the North Pole, where he claimed he witnessed a massive open vortex that reached inside the Earth. When he flew inside, he claimed that there were inhabitants of the inside of the Earth that were not human and were entirely unaware of human beings, the creation of our weapons of mass destruction, and the governments of the world. Many hollow Earth conspiracy theorists pointed to this witness account as evidence of their hypothesis but were argued against by scientists and physicists at the time, claiming such an idea to be impossible. Interestingly enough, Google Earth blurs out the poles of our Earth, and international laws make it illegal for planes to fly directly over poles, despite it being the shortest path from certain areas to get across the Earth. This theory only gained more traction as proof of other planets in the solar system surface containing these vortexes. Life on an Asteroid In 2007, an astrobiologist at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center named Richard Hoover made a shocking discovery when analyzing pieces of a meteorite that fell in France in 1864. He discovered structures that appeared to be fossilized microbes. Many NASA scientists challenged his hypothesis by stating that fossilization of microbes could have occurred as the meteorite struck the Earth and may not have been original inhabitants of the meteorite itself. 
After further research, however, this rebuttal was quickly disproven as definitive proof was established that the fossilization occurred prior to the meteorite's landing. Richard Hoover specifically stated in his papers and presentations, as many of the filaments shown in the figures are clearly embedded in the meteorite rock matrix. Consequently, it is concluded that the filaments cannot logically be interpreted as representing filamentous cyanobacteria that invaded the meteorite after its arrival. They are therefore interpreted as the indigenous remains of microfossils that were present in the meteorite rock matrix when the meteorite entered the Earth's atmosphere. These reports and hypotheses only help to contribute to the widely debated theory of panspermia, which is a recently hypothesized general theory of life that holds the belief that perhaps all life across the universe is seeded via meteorites. This posits forth the mathematical implications that life overall is not very rare and rather quite common. Perhaps even our cells were planted here by a crashed meteorite millennia ago. The Rendlesham Forest Incident In December 1980, near Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk, England, a series of reports emerged from credible witnesses describing an unidentified flying object landing in the forest. These reports included sworn affidavits from military officers, causing significant controversy. Around 3 a.m. on December 26, a security patrol at the Royal Air Force Base Woodbridge noticed bright lights descending near Rendlesham Forest. The patrol encountered a glowing object with metallic features and attached brightly colored lights. One member of the patrol, Sergeant Jim Penniston, later claimed to have encountered an unknown origin craft, confirming the sighting of an unidentified flying object. Further evidence emerged the following day, with Lt. Col. Charles Halt discovering spiked radiation readings at the supposed landing site and a triangular depression in the ground. Halt's assertion that the incident was extraterrestrial led to reprimand and cover-up allegations by the UK and US governments. The Rendlesham Forest incident continues to be a mysterious event, leaving experts puzzled.